Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Good to see you guys rolling in here. We'll give it a few minutes. Not sure how many we'll get, but we'll see. <clears throat> Mooney, good to have you. Hope you're doing well, man. Oh man, that range, that probably Probably a lot of red on the portfolios today, myself included. Steph, how are you? Good to have you in here. Give it one or two more minutes, then we'll get going. Um, there's kind of a, a lot we can talk about and could. I'm trying to figure out I mean, I know my layout. I know I want to, what I want to do for the class. But I want to figure out where I want to spend the most time, stuff like that. So I'll probably get started pretty soon here. There's a lot to go over, but um, anybody totally new to OT or totally new to options in general or both, let me know in the chat. It'd be great if we got some new people in here for sure. Matthew, new to OOT, nice. Donnie, first lecture, wow, nice, nice guys. Uh, Byron and Matthew, have you, you uh, had any OOT or um, options experience or totally, totally new? Two months new, nice, Kevin, nice. Nice, Matthew. Nice. Yep, Matthew. It takes it takes time, man. It takes time. Um, I was telling someone, another member in DMs, that you know, if if anyone flashes quick, easy gains to you and tells you it's super easy, they're lying to you. Um, because if everybody's really, really good at this, you know, my young cousin could be doing this too. My mom could be doing this. My dead grandma could be doing this, but. It's not that easy, man. It's just like anything else. Like people look at Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, and they want to be like them, but they don't know the time they put in after hours. They, you know, they see the success on the TV screen, but they don't know the hours they put in. That's the same with same with the uh, options trading and the stock market. It's like people want to join because they see some on Twitter or Instagram, and they think it's just quick, easy money, but it, it takes a lot of work. But uh, once you get it down, once you get the foundation down. Um, it's a lot less stress, um, but and that's kind of the, the focus of tonight and why we're kind of, you know, Rivers class on Sunday was a market scan like usual. And then last night was kind of the ask all whatever you want kind of thing, because that's what we really want to do, especially the people new to OT and then especially new to options as well, told, you know, completely new because it's it's a lot to navigate. It's a lot in the server. There's a lot going on. Trade for is wild, but um these lectures, you guys that are here, we're glad that you're here because this is where you actually get some learning in. It's where the pace is slower. You can ask questions and hopefully they don't get skipped over like they would on trade floor. Um, so yeah, with that, you guys, um, my name, my Discord name is Starth one k I'm one of the support staff members. i um, been doing lectures for about, well, all of 2024. So about six or seven months now. Uh, been an OT for four years or three and a half years. Um, but enjoying it a lot, a lot of ups and downs. Things are real fun right now for me the last couple of years. Um, but like I said, those of you who are, are a beginner, um, I was once there too. And so that's kind of my focus up tonight. Why I think charting is important. You know, it's, it's obvious why it's important, but maybe just to kind of show you guys um, and kind of show you guys when we say chart, you know, you can see my, my keynotes here. When we say chart on larger time frames. Um, you know, we're, we're day traders mostly, we're scalpers. Every once in a while, we're, we'll swing stuff. And, you know, intraday, 
you know, you might look at spy and you're like, well, why do I care about the one hour? You know, granted we're at all time highs right now, but it's like, why, why am I not on the five minute and the 15 minute? And hopefully I can explain that a little bit for you guys a little bit as we go through this, but really just when we start charting, um, I want you guys to really focus on watching how, when I start in these larger time frames, the four hour, the one hour, maybe even the daily, and then we zoom into these smaller time frames. hopefully that's a light bulb moment for you going off and going, wow, you know, everything still lines up the same. And so, you know, you never want to like be on the one minute chart and say, oh, I'm charting a support line here. It's like, no, you need more information, especially when we're at all time highs. It's like, this is when we're at all time highs on spies and cues and everything else, Apple, whatever it is. You know, I kind of call it price discovery. It's like we are literally the first time up here ever. And it's like, you know, if for it to go up more, you know, somebody has to buy shares at quote unquote the top. You know, there has to be a demand for it. And so you know, using fib retracement and stuff like that. What's up, Byron? You got a question or you just got off the mic? No question. Sorry about that. Oh, you're, you're a good man. I'll meet you real quick, but feel free. Uh, if you do have questions, um, you guys just unmute your mic. I gave you guys the ability to unmute it. So um, no worries, man. But yeah, guys, um, today is a very good day. Do not buy puts at the bottom and calls at the top. We are in a very tight range. And then also trend lines. You know, there's, there's many, many times where we might be pushed up to something. We're like, why do we reject there? It's because, you know, there's probably a trend line that we rejected two, three, four times, or even on the bottom side. You know, you think puts are going to pay and it's like we bounce a zone. It's like, well, I don't have a support level there. Well, trend lines are also support resistance. They're just in a diagonal form. And hopefully if, if we have some time later, um, my lectures usually run long because I talk a lot, but hopefully give you guys some trade ideas and a little helpful advice to navigate this market, um, test your knowledge a little bit. Um, but before we do that, I got one cheesy graphic for you guys because that's what I do. Um, obviously, it starts with charting. Um, a lot of people do this, you know, for me, the market opens, I'm on the West coast markets at what, 630, you know, the bell goes off at 630 and they want to just dive into something and they immediately think about money, 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 money. And when they're making money, it's good. And then they, they either do one or two things when it goes against them, they freak out. They don't know where to sell or two, they're in profits. And then something goes a lot more they're like, oh man, I sell too early. Why do I sell too early? You know, um, this is why, because you guys need to chart. You guys cannot skip steps. You know, if we're, if we're talking about football, it's like, you know, Patriots want to get to the Super Bowl. They don't think about this. They think about their practicing. They think about, you know, the film room. They think about eating healthy and training and stuff like that. Like they, they don't skip steps to be a championship team. That's the same with charting, you guys. It's cheesy graphic, I know, but like you guys cannot skip steps. In the pre-market before it opens, um, you guys have to have things charted out. You have to have alerts set. Um, you need to find what would be a stop loss if you're going to be in Apple calls today. You know, you need to think, okay, where's my stop loss? Where are my profit targets? Where are those going to be at? And then you look for a strike price. Then you say, okay, it's still trending up. Apple's pushing up. Um, I want to get the whatever, whatever calls. Okay. Then you have a trade plan because you did all this before. But what most people want to do is they just want to dive into a trade with no charting whatsoever and they have no game plan, then they freak out when they start taking losses, okay? So let's just get right to it, let's dive in, you guys. If you guys have been in my lectures or anything like that, you know I like to start on the one hour and the four hour. Um, Donnie, yeah, I'm, uh, I think people can hear me. Check to see if you have anything plugged in, Donnie, if your volume's down, maybe you got some headphones or iPod, AirPods plugged in, something. Um, but yeah, let's start with Spy Guys. Um, this is what everybody likes to play. Um, this is a one hour chart. Okay. And it's difficult, obviously, when we keep making new all time highs, obviously, like we have, um, we need to figure out kind of why, where are we going? Why, you know, why we're up here? How, where do we sell from here? You know, the, the biggest and the best thing to do, the most important thing to do, I should say, is we'll use Fibonacci's and we'll use round numbers. Okay. So I always want to start with some Fibonacci retracements um, because we're all, we're, we're all time highs. And I think if you're in Rivers lecture last night, um, you guys know we talked about Fibonacci's and so Fibonacci retracements. A Fibonacci retracement is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I'm gonna go down to a smaller time frame here, you guys, to show you kind of how to get going on a Fibonacci retracement. Because again, 
This is new territory for everybody. We have never been up here before, okay? And so when we use a Fibonacci retracement, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a retracement. And so for me, um, let me pull it up here. I think it's this one. So when, we, when you're looking on a push up and a pullback, that is, that, is, that is the exact term of what it's doing. That is the retracement that you're looking for. So for me, when we when I seen this range early today, early this morning, um, you know, I kind of got the vibes that we're going to be ranging for the day. So I grabbed, you see, if you see, I clicked on this first low of the morning and then we pushed up to this zone here. We, we pushed up here. We pushed up here. I immediately drew this retracement here to this top zone here. OK. And as you can see. You know, we don't have a ton of levels here. So one thing you can do is a Fibonacci retracement again. This is telling you from this move up here, this retraced 23.6%, uh, 38.2 and 50% and so on. And so these retracements, you guys can use these when we're at all time highs to try and find new levels here. As you can see, I drew this, you know, the first hour of the day. And if this is the only, if this is the only lines or support resistance that I use that day, we can see how clearly price moves up and around Hopefully that's close enough for you guys. We can see how much it respected these levels here. So no, we sold down to these morning lows here and everyone's probably diving in puts, but you know, it was the opening range technically and we bought it back up and we start pushing again. You can see we pushed to this 23.6 again, retracement again. We sold down. Everyone's probably thinking puts, but look at right where we sold you guys. Even if you just use this Fibonacci retracement, we sold right down here perfectly i had no idea where this is going to line up perfect to the penny and we get this huge buy up candle in the five minute time frame again it stops right at a fib maybe you take all your profits maybe you let one run and then we trade this breakout and it says oh we're breaking out we're breaking out and look at what we do we sell right back down into the fibonacci zone and so this is one way you guys um using a fibonacci retracement even intraday um let me check my notes here because i don't want to skip over anything on this retracement one second. All right. So I want to show you guys something kind of really cool here. Hang with me. Let's see what day do I want? Need more time, guys. One second. To me. All right, there we are. So we have on, gotta make sure you get my days right. Damn, still not enough time. I really wish you could zoom into a specific date on TOS. All right. Um, all right. So Fibonacci retracement on this zone here, we'll, we'll pretend that we have not seen this breakout yet, but again, when we wanna play the retracements going down. So the same thing, you guys, when we are in a downtrend, this is the 15 minute time frame. We're on a downtrend here. The best thing you can do, you can draw some trend lines. We'll get to that in a second. But again, Fibonacci retracement levels here. The slow. So you can start looking here and you can start seeing how things line up. Again, I'm on the 15 minute time frame. Uh, this is on May 23rd of this year. So we pushed up to, we'll just call it 534, immediate rejection sell down at the time that was an all time high, we sell down, we push up, we get these retracements back up, we sell down, and now we start making a push you guys. And so this is where it's kind of fun to look at, okay? So we, we make this sell down through May 31st, big buyback, and now let's scroll to the right you guys and see how this lines up. Look at this. 
So now this is June 5th, you guys. This level 534, we push up. Again, if you had no more levels up here because it's all time high or making you all time highs, throw in a Fibonacci retracement. Um, Mooney, yes, that is the default setting that Thinkorswim gives you. Um, the main ones are the 38, the half, the 78, and the one. But also when we go to all time highs or um, extensions, which, I'll which I will show you guys, um, we want to see how these come into play here, these extensions over the 100% retracement. So again, you guys, if we were to just leave this on here from May and now we're looking to the right, look at all this consolidation here, you guys. Consolidation, consolidation, breakout. And now look at where this breakout is. This is no accident, you guys. Like this is how we find levels when we're making you all time highs. It's like we push right up to this 544. And that's the 1.68 fib extension from this breakout zone here. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody on the Fibonacci's a little bit? Because, and you can use this for any stock. Again, you can use this intraday. You can use this every single day. If we push up, um, let me delete. Let me see if there's anything on top of this, just to see where we're at. Hey, I have a question. Go ahead, sir. So uh, can we use fib levels on a previous day? Uh, in order to maybe see what's going to come up uh, the next day or the current day? Um, let me think how to answer that. You you would use, okay, so today, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a good question. Let me, let me I think, answer how I'd want to. Um, I, th I think after today's over, um, I don't think I would draw a fib within here. I think I would draw... I would get some support resistance lines going here. So I would do just for quick lecture, I would draw like these would be my main two because obviously we ranged really hard today and this probably killed a lot of people. That's not the point. But what I would do today, I think this will piggyback off your question. It's actually a good question. Um, so today, so say say we're pushing up here pre-market five, 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 seven. So a Fibonacci extension again. We talk fib retracement, a fib extension um, is the next thing you want to do. And you draw it. Let me find it. So if we are trending up, you grab your low, you grab your high, and you go back to your low. Let me put it out here so we can see the levels. And so based off that, this is our extension levels to look for. Um, because again, we're at all time highs. So it's, you know, say this, say market's opening tomorrow. Again, we're pushing up to five, five, seven. It's like, okay, where do we sell? Um, we want to look for round numbers. So five, five, seven, we want to look for previous day high and low. So our, this is our new all time high from today, five, five, seven, one, eight, five, five, eight. And now we look at these extensions because really that's all we have. And then on top of that, just play the trend, you know, so say, say we're going up and we just trend really, really nice. There's no dip. I mean, there's dips, but we just keep trending the EMAs. You just ride the trend and you ride your trade best mm -hmm. you can. But to answer your question, I would do a FIB extension today and you just leave these levels on here and they will mark it over here on the on the right side of what to look for. So obviously 557, all time high, 558 and 558.10 or 558.11. Okay, thank you. And uh, yep. one more question. Go ahead. Do you use the EMAs to determine the trend if it's uptrend or downtrend, like if they cross? Or yep. would you yep. use the cloud, maybe if it's a green cloud, red cloud? Yep, definitely. Great question. That kind of goes right into what we want. So again, you guys, um, hopefully I'll answer your question in a roundabout way. So trend lines, trend, trending, support resistance, it's all kind of the same thing. And so, you know, if we look from july 2nd basically all the way all the way through today this is a one hour chart you guys this is an uptrend you know you buy the dips on retracements so this yellow line is the hourly 20 this purple is the nine moving average exponential and so uh to, yeah to answer your questions is, is you would just use i mean obviously this is hindsight but if you were in something, say you're in um, August 1st calls, you entered them um, July 2nd, and say you bought this bottom, you absolutely, you just, 
you go a larger time frame and you just ride the trend and you and you push up to these zones and I'll get to some some actual support and resistance charting in a second but you push up to a zone and you say okay we closed at 549 and since you have four weeks five weeks of time you wait for the trade to stop you out you know yes you can set a percent stop loss if you're working or busy or something but for me if I buy this down here and we're pushing up like, okay, we push 549. I'm taking profit on say about five. I'm going to sell three. Okay. Now I got two left. You just, and we open, pretend this is the next day or today. You just keep riding that trend up and up and up. And you, you use the longer time frame confirmation. Like when you're in something with time, there's no reason to be on a one minute time frame or a five minute time from intraday. Like, cause you can see these wicks here, um, these wicks, but it's like, this is the one hour time frame. This tells you that bears tried to push it down, but bulls defended right here and pushed it up. And this is where the candle closed up here. Again, the candle open here, bears pushed it down, pushed up again. Candle open here, a little dip for the bears and bulls pushed up again. And so when you're in a nice trend like that, you, you stick with it. You stick with your trade plan if you have time. But stuff on short dated, you guys, yes, you need to go to a smaller time frame and stuff like that. If you're scalping, that's totally different. Um, yeah, Tim, so purple is the nine exponential moving average. Um, the yellow is a hourly um, moving average. Uh, um, it's that study from River that he, that he always has. And you hear people, myself on Trade Force saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm taking calls or I'm, I'm taking the rejection off the hourly 20, Tim. That's, that's um, the hourly 20. Um, you can only do this on Thinkorswim. Under studies, it is called a multi-time frame moving average. Um, I have one for the 200. I have one for daily closes as well for the 9 and the 20. But this is the 20 our exponential multi-time free moving average so it's different than an exponential um nick if we're going long only have one contract um so it, it depends okay so it depends how much time you have uh nick so if you got um you know if you're buying Again, kind of back to this example here, we chopped today, so this is not a, a super, super good example, but um, if we go back here, you know, a few days, um, if you got, you know, if you entered on July 5th, so that was, I think, a Friday for us. So, you know, if it expires that day, to me, so say you bought the bottom, if I'm only in one contract, I, I, I have my profit targets intraday. If it's short dated, it's intraday if that makes sense. So if I say I bought the bottom here on spy calls, I bought 552 spy calls are now in the money. I am for sure selling into this zone here, this pre-market wick. And if I have one contract, I'm not, it's hard. I'm not going to say I would never hold it, but I, I'm going to book gains. And then I'm going to wait for, if you hear me talk on trade floor to others in DMs, a break and a retest. So a breakout and you retest the bottom of this box, uh, who was that, Nick? You get re-entry here. And you push up, take profit. Obviously, it's in hindsight, it's easy for me to say. We push up, take profit. We dip back down to the nine. Entry again. Obviously, it's a trend day. It's easier said than done. You don't know we're in a trend day until the day's over. And you go, oh, that was a trend day. But to answer your question, if I'm only in one, I'm definitely booking profits. Or at a bare minimum, I do a trailing stop. So say right here is 50% profits, I will try and figure out what like a break below 552.18 would be, say it's 30%. So I would set a trailing stop, say, you know, if it breaks below 30% profits, they'd tag me out. You know, basically you gotta protect those profits. You can't let it go 50% green and back down to break even because you're greedy. So it all comes down to trade plan, you guys. Um, hope answers your question. All right, guys, some charting. Um, that's why we're here. That's the purpose of the lecture, some actual support resistance lines. So this is a one hour chart, you guys. Um, let me delete this because I don't want too much confusion. So to me, I'm not going to say easy, but when you get more experienced, when you look at a one hour chart, um, it becomes easier. And that's how you always want to build 
a trade plan or if it's a new if it's a new stock that so like Eva, I think she alerted or gave a trade idea for a AVGO or whatever it's called. If you guys never trade that before, the first thing you need to do is you need to get a longer time frame. You just you just need to zoom out literally and just look at the chart. Okay. So if this was spy here, if we didn't have this whole move from let's just say pretty much beginning of July. So we got this whole June level here. Immediately, I see some key levels. And I'm gonna mark them and kind of explain why I mark them. Um but let me get into drawing mode here. Yeah. Kyle, again, open mic. Do you have a question? Do you want me to? Oh, shit. My bad. Oh, you're all good, man. I'll meet you. It's all good. All right. So SPY, again, we're on the one-hour time frame. It's all going to make sense, guys, when I zoom in. So I want to look for key levels here that we push up. And we retest. This is gonna be a re this is gonna be a repeating theme of me tonight, a repeating phrase you're gonna hear me say. So longer time frame, push up and retest. Boom, I got one level there. Um one level here. So this at the time was our all-time high. So now we, we're consolidating. We push up another all-time high. Okay. And I'm not just marking because it's all-time high. Why did I mark this level here? 548.48. Okay, because look at this level here. When we, we find zones, you know, hear me kind of say pivot zones or areas of interest, okay? We push up, we sell down through a previous all-time high. You better have 548.50 marked. And look at where we're coming to, back to an old zone. Bounce, bounce, bounce. You better be buying calls off this zone here. Okay, we push up again. You know, say this is today is you no know, uh, June 27th. Okay, where do we want to start taking profit? Okay, you guys look at. Hopefully, I'm zoomed in enough. Sorry, you guys are playing our phones and stuff. So we consolidate and we push up and look at where we reject again. You guys, it's not, it's not an accident when we reject these levels here. This is each candle is one hour of information. You know, one hour of volume, one hour of trading, whatever you want to call it. So we're not on the one minute time frame charting these tiny moves. This is when you chart on larger time frames, this is your conviction to say, okay, we sold down, we bounced. If this was June 21st, okay, why are we bouncing here? Why are we why are we bouncing? Look left. We're bouncing to old all-time highs, you guys. Okay. We push up, we sell down, we ultimately sold through it. The next day we pushed up again. Tried to sell down, we pushed up over it. Next day, we're bouncing again, okay? When we bounce and consolidate like this, you guys have to ask yourself, okay, I'm on the five-minute time frame. This isn't making sense. Let me zoom out. And you zoom out, it's like, look, at we have three levels here marked. Obviously, we have some up here, but three levels so far to get us going the month of June, the end of June. We push up or reject. We sell down. You better be taking puts again because, again, this is a huge level, you guys. You see the theme here. And we zoom left or right, sorry. We push up, we close over, I mean, pre-market or post-market after hours. And what do we do the next day? We sell down right to old resistance, now support. Okay, so a resistance is overhead, a support is below you. When we push up, this 548.50 is now your support. Why is it support? We broke over it. It's this zone here, it's this zone here. We have this touch here. And so the key is you guys, you want to look for is it the most touches, okay? So quick charting, I just have a couple levels here, okay? Let's move up. We got all-time highs. There's not a whole lot of info up here. But again, you see I have this level up here. Why I have it charted? We pushed up. We sold down. And those quick levels I have here. So the one-hour chart, does that make sense to everybody? Why, why we picked the one-hour or the four-hour, stuff like that? And so another thing here, let's go the four-hour. Let's see what this looks like. Zoomed way out, of course. Okay, we are now on the four hour time frame, and we're gonna zoom into the same same zone and look at on the four hour chart, what levels make the most sense to you? Again, it's these levels here. And one could argue we should probably, we could add this guy up here, okay? So again, it's late June, let's just pretend. Okay, now let's go the 15 minute chart. We can get back to these levels quickly. Okay. 
Now we're intraday trading. Look at these levels again, you guys, how they all line up. Does this make sense why we start in the larger time frames to build your game plan here? Uh, let's see, Perry, look at this. How do we determine if a bounce will fall through the downtrend? Um, Perry, what, um, I don't know how late I'm into your question. What, what level did you have, Perry, on your question about failing a downtrend? Um, if you're referring to this, um, we don't, you know, how do, how do we know? We don't, we don't know. We just, you know, this market is a game of probability and chances. And so what you want to do is you want to reduce your risk. You know, if, if we're in this consolidation for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost broke out, sold back down. If we're in this zone, consolidation zone at seven days. And on day five, if you know that we sell down and, and usually bounce up, like, yeah, take your shot here. But again, it comes down to your game plan on 544. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read the chat. Um, if we come down here, like, yes, take your shot. This would, yeah, this would probably be a stop out. Say, say you take calls here. That candle would probably, you know, stop you out. That one would for sure or sh surely would. But again, it comes down to how much time you guys have on the contracts. So you guys mostly play zero DTEs. I'll get into that a little bit later on why just because it exists, you don't have to take it. But again, my point is you can take this here, maybe get stopped out. Okay, this is a 15 minute candle, 15 minute candle and a big buy up back into the range. You have to you have to gather your emotions. Yeah, you maybe you lost money on hopefully a small stop out, but you have to go, okay, we sold down for 15 minutes. The next 15 minutes, we almost broke out over. The next 15 minutes, we broke over. So bulls, or excuse me, bears, sellers did not succeed. They succeed on this candle, yes. But we are back up over this range that we've been in. Let's pretend we're here for five days. You got to be able to shake off the bias of, you know, that loss or the motion of that loss. And you just try it again. We brought back over, you know, it's a huge zone that we bounced many, many times throughout the days. And you just, you keep taking your shots. Um, was that, um, yeah, Nick, that was your question. Yeah. You keep taking your shots and it depends. So again, if, you know, this is just an example, a wild example. So say you wanted to buy spy puts or excuse me, spy leaps, a leap, which means it expires in 365 days, it expires in a year. Okay. If you buy a 545 call leap, so you have an entire year for profit. Are you going to stop out down here? Yeah, you'll see red, but you have to tell yourself, okay, my trade plan is, you know, we haven't broke pre-market lows. I literally have an entire year until expiration. You know, you can, you can hold through this red, but if you're playing SPX or SPY and it's a zero DTE, like you need to have a proper stop and a reasonable stop. So, the amount of time you have definitely has to factor into your trade plan. So I can't just say, oh, you buy two years of time on SPY 545 call and it sells down 60 cents and you stop out. Like to me, that's just silly. But you get my point is you have to decide, okay, how much time do I have? How much am I going to risk? Okay. We know this level here is big. I've said it over and over. And we, we're using larger time frames. We start at the four hour all the way down to 15. And it still makes sense, you guys. So especially the new traders in here, does that make sense on why the larger time frame? Um, and it can, it can be anything, you guys. We can go to Apple's all-time high. What is something maybe, let me trade. Oh, this is a good example here. BAC, Bank of America. I miss this trade, sadly. Um, I, I, I mentioned this to a member here. I'll cry about it a little bit more. There's this trend line here today. And I said, I want to play the breakout of trend line. And I said, I want to take a dip at 40, 80, or 40, 40, 95. It hit 40, 95 to the penny. And the contracts only went as low as 0.4, so 40 cents, $40. And my fill is 
and I missed this entire move. This is over 100% trade. But the point I'm getting at here is this old level here, you guys, I never delete support and resistance lines. I never delete trend lines on my charts because this line here, let me make it thick to show and prove how. So look at this thick line here. We're on the five minute time frame. Five minute time frame. We're going to go to the daily. And I think I have to zoom out two years here. So I told another member, they said, how did you get that level? And I said, 2022. So Bank of America, it's the first time here. This is the daily chart. The first time here since March 30th, 2022. If you bought shares here and you held red for two and a half years, where do you think you're selling at? 4162 is the answer. And look at where we pushed up and we ultimately sold down. Yeah, it could have paid a little bit more, but look at, they mentioned, they said, hey, do you want to do a break and retest? Yes, the break and retest, the break and retest, yes, would have paid. They were correct. Breakout and retest would have paid more. But ultimately, I'm not, when we break up to a level we've never been before in two years, I am 100% taking profit all the time, every time up here. Because ultimately it pushed down and sold. So Bank of America is high on watch for me tomorrow. But my point is, you guys, this support level I literally had drawn, it's been there for two years because I've traded Bank of America two years ago. So when you guys get good at charting and get experience and you build a watch list like this, save your levels. Yes, it could get ugly or, or cluttered, but if you rely on key zones, key areas, I'm telling you, it all makes sense. So even back to the five minute time frame, it still lines up here, you guys. Um, yep. Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's see. I, I have a quick question. Yep, so, go ahead, man. I get the idea, you know, trade, I mean, put your levels on the higher uh, time frame, but for scalping, like, do you want to base your entries around those levels as well? on the higher time frame and your exits or? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So um, this is a little subjective. Everybody, um, if, if you're a scalper, so shout out to River. Um, let me zoom in here. So this is a five minute time frame. I'm gonna try to answer your question. If you're a scalper, you are gonna buy, um, and hopefully you can see this, if not, let me know. So this blue line is VWAP. Okay, this is a five, each candle is five minutes. So if you're a scalper, you'll you'll take this retest down to VWAP and you'll trade it up to maybe this pre-market zone here. It's just an example, okay? And you'll sell here. And maybe you'll take this dip, let's pretend it takes touches the nine, and then you'll scalp these zones here. But for me, the way the way I trade, so we, the reason I said it's subjective is because everybody trades different. I only trade breakout, retest, breakdown, retest, pre-market high and pre-market low, and the opening range. So that's kind of four different or three different things, if that makes sense. Uh, I think that was Johnny who answered that question. So for me, I am going to take, I'm not going to trade these scalps because I'm not a scalper. Like I, I day trade, I literally take one to three trades a day. Like that's literally it. Like I can show you my PL journal from the last six or seven months. And it's literally one to three trades a day, just because I look for key areas. This is probably not the best example. If we go back to that June level, you guys, I am for sure going to take that every single time down at those levels that we're at down over here. Um, Johnny, to answer your question, every time areas of interest, like we can scalp, you can scalp this zone for sure, 100%. But for me, I'm looking for areas of interest where if I take, so a again, breakdown, retest, breakdown, retest. If I take puts here at this VWAP, I am for sure selling at the low. Again, pre-market lows, like I said, I trade pre-market highs, pre-market lows, low of day, you know, and then support resistance. And so, for me, I am for sure selling. Obviously, this would have been huge gains here. I'm selling into this big zone here. So double part to answer your question. 
Remember, we already have these zones here. You know, pretend again, this is June. One K just has class last night. Said Mark five forty four. We sell down. I'm se I'm selling here for sure. Okay, and then yeah, you can scalp this sure, but we push back up, and again, break out, retest again, break over. So, uh, was resistance temporarily. Now it is support again. You have to ask yourself or tell yourself, okay, we broke down. We just reclaimed the support that we've been holding for five days in a row. So again, break out. You don't buy the top of this candle because if you bought, if you bought this dip here, you got to think people are selling, selling, selling into resistance. You don't buy the top of someone's candle. Like you want to buy, especially short dated contracts. You buy on what, you know, what I say, a black Friday sale. You know, you want that 65 inch TV for 400 bucks or tomorrow on Black Friday, it's going to be 325. Of course, you're going to buy it for 325. Do you want to buy SPY, uh, SPY 545 calls for a buck 50 or 80 cents? 80, $80. The obvious answer is 80. Okay. So a breakout and a retest, Johnny, entry every single time. And again, my trade plan, where am I, where am I taking profits? I'm taking profits. High of the day, this zone here, I'm taking profits pre-market zone every single time. I'm not buying, I'm not buying a 544 or a 545 call here and going, hey, I'm holding to 546. Like we haven't hit 546 all day. This wasn't today, obviously, but this is weeks past. But we haven't hit 546 all day. So why is your profit target? I'm not saying you, but why would a profit target be way up here? Oh, I guess it is this pre-market wick. I misspoke. So my profit target is not 547. Because we've we've never went here all day. You need to trade the range. You need to trade what the market gives you. Hopefully that answers your question, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you very much, man. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm catching up to questions. Nick. Man, I talk a lot. I'm falling behind. Nick, uh, what are you referring to? What we're talking about? Amazon, the 200 mark. Do you mean keep securing uh Calls, profits there around Amazon 200. Hopefully that's what you mean, probably. Push up 200, yeah, Amazon, Amazon's nice. All right, you guys, trend lines. Trend lines are also support and resistance. Let me check my notes here. Okay. What to do Delta Airlines, I think. All right. Again, building a trade plan. We're going back to the one hour time frame. This is DAL Delta Airlines. Trend lines are support and resistance. So when you see a downtrend, Ignore this for now, just for theory. When you see a downtrend and we have two touches, all you need for a trend line is two touches, okay? So this is today, um, or pretend this is today, excuse me, June 28th, we have two touches we reject. I'm immediately drawing this and I'm extending this out because this is part of a trade plan. When we come down here and we push, Look at where this kind of had trouble with here, this trend line here. So this is part of building a, a trade plan, you guys. If we, if you buy calls down here and you go, oh man, why do we reject? Well, obviously we rejected all, well, obviously the previous day open, but also you have a trend line here, okay? Another trend line. I can make it shorter for you guys because another member was watching this today and we both fumbled it. Is that what he had? What did we have here? He had that. Was it on the smaller time frame? Let me see here. I think this is what he was watching. So we sold through this pre-market zone here. I don't know if he's in here or not, but we we're both watching this on a trend line. So trend line here, sell down under, push up, reject. Push up, reject, push up, reject, pre market, push up, reject, pre market today, push up, break out. So remember, we don't buy that breakout candle. This is, guys, this is just a resistance line, but
but at a diagonal. So again, obviously it's in hindsight um, on how, how easy this would have been, but a breakout candle Breakout, retest, and now you have, I'm gonna draw a box for you guys just to visualize how I would have done it. That's probably too loose of a stop. So you play the breakout and you say, okay, I think Delta Airlines is gonna go to the nine daily, okay? Breakout, retest here. So your stop loss is under this shaded area. Hopefully everybody can see that. So your stop is small, you guys. And if you've been in my classes, you want a stop that makes sense. You want a stop loss that is smaller than your take profits. Okay. So your stop is under the zone. It never triggered. We play this big breakout. Okay. Where do we sell? Where do we sell? Look left. It's a quote I always say, but it's true. We take this breakout candle here. You better be trimming up here for sure. You're not trimming because it's, only 10% or only 80%, whatever it is. You're trimming here because previous day, look at that rejection zone and look at it. first touch here, we rejected, okay? So always have your profit targets and plan ahead of time, okay? Maybe you had 10 contracts, you sold seven here. You said, now my stop is 47 or 46.7, just hypothetical. We push up and now your stop is break, break below yesterday's highs okay that's how you leave runners you guys but again my point is trend lines are just support resistance as well um writing the trend obviously this is easy in hindsight starbucks s b u x this is obviously hindsight hypothetical but we have consolidation here it is, we'll just call it 79. Let me make it thick, just so you guys can see on your screens. 79, this is a one hour time frame. We push up the month of June, we sell down, we bounce, we push up, we down, we sell down. You have to ask yourself, we are above this level for one, two, three, four, five, three weeks, we'll just call it three weeks. We sell down. That is obviously a lot of selling pressure. We sell when we break a level that we've been over for three weeks, okay? These are the trades where you can buy with time. Obviously, this is hindsight. You can buy, this was June 28th. You could have said, oh man, we broke that big 79 level. We've bounced and held that for however long. I'm gonna take six week expiration puts. I'm gonna take the 78 put, okay? And this is where you build a trade plan. And again, the purpose of this chart is a trend. You break the 79. And this is where you make the real money on long swings. As you can just look at this on the one hour. So you took puts on June 28th. We sold down. You took some profit. We pushed up. We rejected previous day zone. We sold down. You took more profit. We pushed up. Reject it again. You get my point. It is a downtrend and the person was asking about how do we hold for longer swings? This is how you hold on longer swings because you rely on the larger time frames. You don't care. I mean, you're, you're mindful, but you stick to your longer time frames and your bigger zones here. And you make, you make the breakout trade stop you out. So if we come up here to this 77, you know, a couple of days later and we push and we break a, a, a downtrend with the, Expense moving average and moving averages, yeah, you can stop out or you control your stops, you know. But you use longer time frame confirmation, guys. And, and like I know I keep saying over and over, but it'll it'll make sense when you zoom out and you see the big picture. Because people that tried to trade the Amazon breakout or Tesla or whatever it was, I mean Tesla had some news, but stuff like this, like use that longer time frame confirmation and buy time. I know a lot of us don't, most of us trade weeklies or spy same days, but if you want to catch these runners or, you know, you want to catch this breakout on spy, you got to buy time and you got to have a trade plan. Okay. So you, you play this breakout of 548.50. You're like, you know what? I'm buying six weeks time, you know, trade that trend, ride that trend, make it stop you out. Uh, why is retracement 
important. Um, do you mean like a break and retest? Um, Kyle, I don't delete any levels. Um, let me rephrase that. I will, so Bank, Bank of America going back, um, this is Kyle's question here. I have my hourly levels, as you guys know, but then intraday, I will either mark, so this is today, and so this was, let's say Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Thursday. So Thursday's high, so last week's high, you know, I will for sure mark some levels. So obviously I didn't get in this trade. I'm crying about it still. Say I got in this trade. I bottom ticked it at 4078. What I will do to keep my charts a little bit clean, cleaner, is to answer your question, Kyle, I'll set an alert here at 4105. And I will set, including a stop loss, I'll set an alert probably a tight-ish stop. And I do this for everything, you guys. Every single day, this is my watch list. So to answer Kyle's question, say I got in here, including a stop loss, I would have an alert for bottom side. And that just, that keeps me from just trusting the setup or if I'm busy with work or something like that, I don't have to stare at every five minute candle. I am gonna set alerts and a stop loss. And then I'm gonna wait for this to trigger. Okay, so we pushed up. Why did I pick 41, 4105? That is yesterday's high and yesterday's rejection. So we push up, ding, 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 this triggers. I check my chart, say, oh, nice, I'm in profits, cool. Sell some here. Small retest. What am I doing? I'm moving my alert to the next level. Okay, again, if you've been in my classes, this is a trade plan type of comment, type of class or thing I would say is, Okay, where's your next profit target? Last week's high, 41.23-ish, whatever. Boom, we fly through that. Cool, I sell more. Okay, where's profit target three? Okay, again, 2022 20, old levels here. I'm fully out. So Kyle, sometimes the charts do get messy. Um, if you guys have been in my old lectures, you know what my Weeble spy five minute chart looks like because I've been trading on it for four years, it's messy. Um, but you can delete intraday levels, yes, but these big key levels, I never, ever, ever delete them because like if we if we broke out here on, on BAC and say I took it at, you know, 4150, okay, where do I sell at? Like, I wanna know that there, I want there to be no guessing in my trading plan, whether it's my stop out, whether my take profit, because if you know me, I do not trade on percents. I trade on levels every single time. I take this trade knowing that this stop out is probably 10, 12%. This profit target up here is probably 30%. And this is probably 60 or 80 or whatever it is. And this is huge. And so I know when I stop out, it's for a small percent loss and I'm not mad about it. Like I don't, I don't enter on this candle here and go, yeah, I'm going to hold all the way to 4178. That's my stop. Like that's just, that's horrible, horrible trading, horrible trading. Yep, alerts, definitely, definitely. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, Yamil, I'm not sure if I answered your question. The, the retracement, I think that's what you're, the, the break and retest. So it's just kind of the thing, it's kind of the joke of you don't want to buy people's sells. You don't want to buy what they're selling, if that makes sense. Okay, so... Um, let me think of something here. So, you know, a, a break, you know, pretty much any of these examples, a breakout in a retest or a breakdown in a retest. So if we were to, this is just really choppy, lots of wicks. Let me see if I can find something better. Um, this is a pretty good one here. Okay. So a breakdown in a retest. So we are in a small, this was yesterday, I think, on SPY. We are in a downtrend. We're up, we're trending down. Let's say five minute time frame. okay? You don't wanna buy your puts at the bottom of this candle here. Because if this trader, if there's, so say your buddy's trading next to you, okay? He says, hey, I'm entering here at 55543. I'm entering puts at, the, at this trend line. 
I will stop out if it breaks over VWAP. So he buys here, it pushes the VWAP. Obviously it's in hindsight, but just this is just for education purposes. Didn't stop out. You didn't take the trade you're waiting. So five minute candle down, he's in profit. Five minute candle down, he's in profit. Five minute candle down, he's a smart trader. He's selling at the current low of day, which is this zone here. Okay, he's selling here. Maybe he takes them all. You don't enter here on the low of the day. Okay, so say you miss this trade, say you're busy at work, say flips took this and they're selling here. Okay, where do I get it? One case says a break and a retest. So a breakdown and a retest. This is where you buy puts. So if puts here cost you $1.20 and you're weighted and you're waiting, you're smart. Now these puts are probably 50% off because you didn't chase. Because if you bought down here, oh man, you go, oh man, do I stop out? Do I stop out? Because then what, what's going to happen here? If you buy puts here at say a dollar, this move is going to hurt you big time. And now you're freaking out because you're playing with emotions because there's money on the line. You're playing the big percent loss that is currently showing and not the trend. Instead of being smart and drawing a trend line, say, hey, rejection once, rejection twice, rejection three, four, five. Oh, maybe, it, okay, I'm going to stop out here. And then what happens? Big kill candle, new low of the day, and now you're pissed. Okay, so um, whoever's answering that question, you buy a break, or at least me, this is how I trade every single day, a break down and retest or a break out. Let's see if we can find a break out. Um, this would probably be a good one here. We sell down to new lows. We defend this hourly 20. Again, you can try puts at the trend line and you get stop out. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you take profit, okay? We are now not setting a new low here. Look at a downtrend. We're not setting a new low. Bears pushed it down, did not break down over this zone here. You don't buy this top. You buy a break out, a retest. You enter here because you know somewhere down here is your stop loss. If you use the hourly 20, if it's part of your trading plan, you stick with that. Um, so a breakdown, retest, because again, calls are on sale. Black Friday sale, I'm buying calls here. I know my loss is small if we break under and we push up. Okay, and let's use this box here as a trade plan. Okay, I'm in great profit. Where do I sell? Where do I sell? You better be selling at this recent rejection zone here. So we push up, we reject, we get this big engulfing candle here. Look where this candle stopped. Look left, wick, wick, and wick. Again, these are computers trading, you guys. This is no accident how this trades. Okay, you better be selling almost everything or leaving a runner here. Boom, breakout. Where do we take profit? Well, okay. Oop, did not want to do that or that. The joys of think or swim. I'm still learning. Oh, great Lord. question. When, What's when, up? when your old trend line is broken, is, when is a breakout of your old trend line? Uh -huh. Would you draw a new trend line? On that new, like, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying it makes sense. Like, would you draw a new trend line after the old one was broken out from? Um, you mean draw this downtrend new or draw an uptrend? What are you asking? Yeah, an uptrend. Like, would you draw an yep. uptrend when it's yep, a breakout? Yep, definitely. So what I would do, and again, obviously, this is hindsight trading. I'm going to move this here. And so this is a little subjective. Some may say draw the wick or catch the wick on this trend. But for me... I, I decide, at least intraday, I go where there are the most touches. So one touch, two, three, almost four, five, six. So to me, six touches, I have this little cluster here. That is a better trend. Obviously, it's in hindsight than maybe this, you know, because it never really comes back to here. So that's a really, really good question. Definitely. When we break a trend here and you have good trained psychology, you're like, you know what? I took I took a put and I got stopped out. Maybe it paid there. Okay, I'm switching to calls because this is a huge level here. Yep, get a trend line going and have a trade plan and go. You know what? Where am I going to sell? 
always ask yourself, where am I going to sell? Look left. Boom, look left. And this trend line, I don't know if it'll catch. Yeah. See, that's where it's subjective. If I catch that pre-market wick, then this does kind of line up. But again, obviously, it's a hindsight. But like when we sold down here and we bounced and we bounced here, again, you guys, this is no accident. We're If you're in puts fighting this, you're fighting against algos smart computers okay like we are very 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 small fish in the very very big ocean of traders like you can buy a thousand contracts you can buy a thousand shares of spy it doesn't matter you're not going to move the, the needle so just trade with momentum if momentum is going down follow the momentum don't take calls here and hold and hold and hold because you're just against it because you're 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 too prideful you don't want to lose money Follow the trend. Follow the momentum, you guys. Uh, let me check. Thank you, man. Yep. Kyle, yes. Calls the hourly. Um, this was, was this yesterday? I think so, yep. Um, yeah. And today. All right, guys. I know we're running late. It's 6 o'clock. If you got to go, you can go. But I still got a few more things I really think it's important I need to touch on. So I'm just going to run long. Stick with me if you can. Um let me check my notes here. I want to go back to my slide. I really literally only have like two slides, but it'll make sense. Um, Cause I want to come back to a couple of things. So some ways to reduce risk every single day, you guys, um, I got about maybe 10 minutes left in my lecture, 10 to 15. Stick with me if you can. Some ways to reduce some risk. Mondays are usually tight trading ranges. Um, I don't have time right now to go through every Monday, but if we go, if you go back and scroll through, and what I mean by tight range, this is usually, even though this was today, this is usually Monday action. A range meaning we set a top, a bottom, and we stay in it all day. We do not trend like other days. Okay. So if you want to reduce some risk, if you're a newer trader or you're not good at charting, take it slow on Mondays. And part two of taking it slow is wait for the opening range. I abbreviate it or it's not or the word, but it's opening range. So the opening range for anybody who doesn't know, um, first of all, check rivers tab every day, 90 minutes after the open. Okay. So you guys that are new, the opening range is the high and the low of the day in the first 90 minutes, the high and the low in the first 90 minutes. Today is a textbook example of an opening range range day. So the market opens at 6.30 for me on West Coast. 90 minutes is this candle here. So the opening range is the first 90 minutes every single day. So ignore this for now. This shaded box is your high and low the first 90 minutes of the day. So you want to reduce risk. Go for a walk, eat breakfast, take the kids to school, take the kids to the park, whatever you got to do. Sit out for the first 90 minutes of the day, and I can guarantee that you have a better grasp on the markets every single day. Whether it's Amazon, whether it's Apple, whatever it is, you can draw the opening range every single day on any stock you want. For Apple, the opening range is this low to clock, okay. And again, we broke out, but look at, we sold back into the opening range and going back to SPY. If I were to extend this, again, this is just super, super textbook range. And myself included, I'm red today, not because of SPY, but because of Disney, that's not the point. You extend, once you once you have this opening range drawn, you just extend it through the whole trading day, you guys. And this can be for any stock, Tesla, Amazon, Google. And when we push up, we reject, we bounce, we push up, reject, bounce. You have to literally tell yourself and ask yourself, are we gonna break down? Probably not. Are we gonna break out? Probably not. Because the opening range is set something like River said, the high or low of the day is an 80% chance it's set for the day. And look at today, you guys. Everyone tried. Maybe, maybe you caught that breakout. That's great. But damn it, River caught this put. 
it was risky, but he said, you know what? I'm not trusting this breakout. We haven't broken out all day. And River got put somewhere up here. I don't know when he sold, but he made some good money on that because he told himself, I don't trust this breakout. Yes, it's new all-time highs, but I think we're going to sell back to the range that we've been in for four hours. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe we trend, we break out. That's fine. But when we range like this on a day, like today, you have to take, uh, where's my notes? Don't buy puts at the bottom. Don't buy calls at the top. You have to take calls every single time in this bottom range here, somewhere around here. You see these big wicks? It's not just a wick. What, what does that tell you? That tells you buyers stepped in and they stepped in hard because this candle opened here. Bears tried, they failed, and this candle closed up here. So bulls completely bought that back up. We sold here, yes, big wick, again, a big buy up. The candle started here, again, bears could not break it lower. You have to go, okay, yeah, we're under the hourly 20, risky, but it's like you have to tell yourself we're in a tight range. If you're not a scalper, you sit this out. If you are a scalper, you, you trade this every single time. Calls somewhere down here are these wicks. Calls, boom, calls, or the opposite. Take the, take the hourly rejection, break down, retest, play the rejection down to here, but you better be selling at the opening range low. So again, you guys, it's the first 90 minutes of the day. I literally have a timer on my phone for 8 a.m. every single day that goes off um, to draw the opening range and just my, my reminder to sit out, okay? Some other ways to reduce some risk, you guys, quickly. Just because a zero DTD is available doesn't mean you have to take it, okay? Flips or empanada, whoever it is, say they say, I want 544 calls and you don't like the risk, you know? Your blood pressure, your heartbeat can't handle those moves of the quick moving calls of the SPX. You can buy a Wednesday expiration, Thursday, Friday. You can buy next week. And when he says, say you bought him, take calls. You know, he's in profits here. Your percent will be as, as much. But when he trims or whoever it is that you took the trade with, trim when they trim. You just bought more time for safety. All that is when you buy more time on a contract, that is your insurance plan that I don't need to be right. Maybe this five minute candle, I want to be right, you know, Say you took it down here. I want to be right in an hour when we push up here. I don't need to be right 5, 10, 15 minutes from now. Like if you bought calls here and you didn't take the profit, sell down, didn't take the profit, and maybe now you're barely break even because it's zero DT. Like if you have a week's time, you're just chilling. You know, maybe you're up 10% from this move here, but you're, you're chilling and you're holding to your profit target. You drink water, voice is getting scratchy. All right, keep a trading journal, you guys. I've been challenging people for six months and nine days to keep a trading journal minimum for 30 days and to send it to me. Not because I wanna know what their profit is, but because I wanna challenge you to keep a trading journal. If you, have a, if you have huge losses, small wins, huge losses, small wins, huge, and you just keep doing it over and over and over, it's like, you know, something has to change. If you keep a trading journal and you literally look at it every day, you enter your trade every single day. I've, like I said, I've kept a trading journal for six months. I'm doing a small port challenge kind of by myself with a few other people though, but I kept every single trade for six months because the PNL does not lie. You guys, it keeps you honest. It keeps you humble is one thing, uh, but you have to keep a trading journal of some sort because if you're taking $50 wins, $200 loss on the day, $50 win today, tomorrow, $250 loss. It's like you have to figure out where that's happening. And if you don't take the time and go, oh, it's from SPX. I'm just I'm just trading SPX here. I take puts and it gets gobbled up here and I lose. I take puts, it gets gobbled up here and I lose. I take calls and then it gets shot down, I lose. It's like, okay, if you're knowingly keep taking things you keep losing and keep doing it over and over and over, like, that's the definition of insanity, I think, when you, you keep repeating the same mistakes. And so you guys keep a trading journal. Um, it's going to keep you honest. But again, I challenge somebody. It's July 9th. 
we got three or four, three weeks left of the month. Keep a train journal, send it to me. If you really want to work out, if you're on a losing streak or maybe you're on a winning streak, but you know, we can go over some trades together and you can say, Hey, I took, you know, draft King puts and I stopped out. And I can say, let's take a look at it. You can say, Hey, my entry was here at this level. I paid this much. I stopped out here. I go, you know what? That's a good stop out. You know, I probably would have took it too. Um, but a trading journal is the only way you guys are going to fix your mistakes. Um, and I challenge you guys, somebody do it. You know, if you're not comfortable showing your port size, that's fine. I get it. But at least you can show your entries. Um, and we can go over some things together and I can get you guys back on track or help you guys or other support members. River, um, he's great too. But, you know, whatever it is, you guys got to keep a journal. Last slide. If you guys are new, beginner traders, I've been around four years. I'm not a pro by any means, but I like trading slower mover stuff because I'm just on chill mode. Like I can take little dips on Bank of America today and little little moves on the chart, you know, are five or 10 cents for me. You know, moves on SPY, little, you know, larger moves on SPY, those are going to kill SPX. Those are going to kill your contracts. So for me, take a screenshot if you want. These are recorded or this lecture is recorded, but I trade, I mean, not every single one of these, but this is my watch list every single day, you guys. I trade these every single day. been doing it on that small port challenge for six months now, or July, seven months. Every single one of these trades, people will chart one or two of them, and they're like, oh, this moves slow. It's boring. It's because they don't catch the momentum swing. But every single one of these trades, you guys, BAC. I'm going to cry about it one more time. I'm going to show you the trade that I missed out on. Because people say these don't pay, and I'm calling BS. I wanted the 41 call at 38. 38 was my limit order. Okay, that was my limit order on the chart. I wanted this candle here to dip into the nine and it probably would have filled me at 38. You can see on the chart, the low was 0.4. These things are slow, they don't pay. Let's see what this paid. Say you bought on ticket 40. It's 138% trade, you guys. 138% trade on a contract that cost you 40 bucks on a contract that expired in three days. It's not a way, way out of the money SPX. It's not a same day SPY that chopped you around today because you're you're hoping for huge gains and SPY just chopped you around. This is the stuff I trade. Obviously I cannot brag about this because the trade did not get filled, but this is exactly what I was looking for. I mentioned the member. I said, I want to break down a 40.95, which it hit, but it did not hit my fill. But every single day, you guys, one of these will pay, I guarantee it. Every single day, something on this watch list will pay you something. So the point of this is, if you guys are new to uh, options trading, if you're new to charting, whatever it is, and SPX is not for you, Tesla is not for you, NVIDIA is not for you because it moves too fast. I get it. That's all we talk about. Spy, QQQ, SPX in the, in the Discord. Message me. Say, hey, do any of these look good to you? What do you think? You know, I'll say, hey, I'm kind of eyeing this, or I'm eyeing this. You know, let's try out some levels. Like, if you message me saying, hey, I'm interested in this, I will for sure help you. But I'm not just going to message you and say, hey, I'm, I'm taking BAC calls here. Um, you should stop out here. You should sell here. Because that doesn't do anything to you. It doesn't help you. I'm going to say, hey, or if you say, hey, I'm interested in Bank of America, and I'm going to say, me too. And then I'm going to say, hey, give me some levels. What do you got? because I want you to learn. And then I'll say, look, that looks good. Mark this level here, you missed this level, let's take it. And then we can trade these together, but I'm not just gonna send people trade ideas or alerts without putting you working because that doesn't help you guys. But if you want slower movers, you can buy two to three weeks of time for like, these are cheap, you guys, cheap, cheap, cheap. You can buy two weeks time on CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, 
60 bucks. And you still got two weeks of time on that, you guys. But please, someone send me some trade ideas. I do have some homework for you guys, for anybody who wants it. Uh, why is that? Sorry, there we go. Somebody chart out PayPal, PYPL, or GM. That's your homework if you guys are new to charting or if you're interested in these names. PayPal and GM have my interest. Um, there's a little bit of a range for me. There's a little bit of a trend on them. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there's a little bit of a range for me on those. There's a little bit of a trend. Um, those are some good ones to learn on. So GM or PayPal or both. Um, and send me your chart. Like I said, remember what we talked about tonight, you guys, if you're a new trader, go to the 30 minute, you know, open up your laptop, whatever it is, go to the 30 minute, go to the one hour and chart out some key levels. Again, find where price is gravitating towards and bouncing off. You don't need every single, on the one hour chart, you don't need every single line here. Find where we push up, we reject. We come down, we bounce, we push up, reject. Find those key levels, you guys. Find a couple trend lines and send them to me. Some new members are in here, I'm challenging you guys. All right, let me check the chat before we wrap. Um, yeah, Kyle, River probably banked today, yep. Um, Byron, um, I've shared my trading journal several times. Um, I have one that I paid for. It's, I guess, um, not controversial, but people say it's kind of crazy that you paid for it, but I have one. Let me show you really quick. Hold on. It's off the screen on purpose. So I got to log in, but so let's see. Yeah, I'll show you my PL. I don't care. So this is the one that I have. Um, it's very, very descriptive. It's very detailed. It automates a lot of things. Um, but I like it because you can enter a portfolio starting size and it keeps like a PL percent. Um, Zorro, he's a staff member in here. He has a free one as well. This one I paid like 25 bucks for. Um, I like it, like I said, it can it has all these details. There's a ton of stuff up here I've hidden because it's kind of geared towards stock trading as well, which you know we don't care about. But it 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 you can enter your strike price, number of contracts, all that stuff. Um, who was this? Byron, yeah. So Send me a DM if you want this. Again, it's on Etsy. I'm not going to give it to you free because it's a small business. It's not mine, but like I said, I always say I support small business, but um, it's cool, man. It keeps track of everything for you. Uh, but like I said, for 25 bucks, I will gladly pay. It's a one-time fee too, but send me a DM if you want the link. Um, it's super, super detailed. Um, but yeah, also there's a free one in staff trade ideas that Zorro pinned. If you just want to go free, a little less detailed, you can look that as well. Um, to Kyle, uh, the scans. Yeah. So what I do, um, sometimes I get lazy. Sometimes I don't do it, whatever. Uh, let me open Discord really quick. Give me one second. And I'll show you. I post them in staff uh, staff ideas. Like I said, sometimes I don't know if anyone reads them or looks at them. I don't want to tag premium every time because I think sometimes people we get tagged too much. So um, I'll I'll put them here. Um, but like I said, I don't do the app premium. But I I'll, I'll put this every day at, at around eight o'clock. I try to um, whether you see them or not. You know, I try and post them here. It's under staff ideas. Um, and again, I can give some ideas if you guys are really interested. Um, I don't give too much bias. I'm not an analyst, but I can give, you know, I can say, hey, I'm looking at this. Or I like, like today would have been like, hey, I look, you know, obviously I lost on Disney puts today. 
I can say, you know, favorite setups, Disney, Upside, or Bank of America, you know, Bank of America, Upside, Disney, Downside, or whatever it is. But I can start posting more, but if you guys want to look for them and under staff ideas at eight o'clock, but honestly, I didn't know if anyone looked at it. So I was like, ah, oh, the hell with it. You know, even though it takes five seconds for me to do a screenshot, but, um, but yeah, um, if anyone does like them, then yeah, I can keep posting them. But yeah, it's just basically, this is just a scan. This is a buy and sell percent buy and sell in the day. This is forever changing every minute of the day. This is changing. It's just a way for me to see, you know, when there was a little bit of a bull flag on BAC, um, it had this flag break teasing it, you know, right in front of me. And it was like 80% buyers on the day. So to me, that's, you know, we're breaking, we're breaking this trend, 80% buyers on the day. Boom. Disney, I took puts. That one hurt today, but whatever i'll show you guys quickly um i don't care i take losses whatever sold down under support i took disney puts i said i will stop out over 9680 because that's this zone here i took puts here vwap got a little candle chop 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 then i got this kill candle that stopped me out i took it because disney was this huge sell down again sell down, break down, retest. That's my bread and butter. On the day we're at 30% buyers. So meaning 70% sellers, that's just building a trade plan. That's why I took it. Um, and then these EMAs, this is just an EMA cross. So on the one hour, you know, don't, don't look at this ever each day and go, it says, it says bearish. Okay. Just dive into it. It just means on a one hour time frame, the nine EMA is under my 21 EMA. On the 30 minute, it's also confirmation on a 30 minute time frame, you know, my nine is under the 21 as well. That's all this is. Don't, I'm not, I'm not saying ignore it, but you can look at this and go, okay, BAC on the one hour, it's probably on a trend. Man, think or swim, still not good at this. And you're damn right. It's on a trend the last three days. Okay. Or on the 15 minute, you can see, oh, it was 15 minute BAC trimming or trending. Sorry. Yes. So that's all that is. It just helps me less time on the charts, less time staring at the charts, but I pay more attention, way more to this buy sell volume. You know, if we sell down, does the buyer or seller volume match it? You know, it's just part of a trade plan. Um, but I can start postings every day if you guys are truly interested in it or even a few people. Oh, let me. Um, Armando, um, yeah, I will post that, um, that chart. I will post it to staff ideas. Again, I, I post it several times, but I'll put it there. For you guys that are here, it's going to be in staff trades or staff ideas tab. Again, uh, one last disclaimer. It is either Excel, which is like Windows base or Google Docs, Mac base. There's no refunds. Yeah, it's only 22 bucks, but make sure you click on the right one because um, that guy does not give any refunds. So make sure you click on the right one. But um, I'm going to tag it or I'll put it in staff ideas tab for you guys. But um. All right, you guys, we're 30 minutes over because that's what I do. I talk a lot. Sorry about that. 33 people stuck around. I hope you guys learned something. Um, my DMs are always, always open, you guys. If you have questions on stop losses, charting, stuff like that, you know, send them and I'll help you guys as much as I can. Um, send me some charts. Send me some ideas, you guys. It doesn't have to be, oh, take over this whole watch list tonight and chart everything tonight. No, but if you guys want some slower moving trades and you're interested in these, Pick one or two, pick the homework, send me some charts and I'll get back to you tomorrow while I pre-market open, I promise. So uh, appreciate you guys, appreciate everything. Have a great night. Let's have a great uh, Wednesday tomorrow. Hopefully it's not choppy, but if it is, let's protect our port, you guys. Let's have a good day. Appreciate you all. Have a good night.